الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له أشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله وسلامه عليه اللهم صل على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تمسك بسنته إرئي الدين ثم أما بعد الحمد لله we continue where we left off and that is at the first principle from the four principles uh, again just as a reminder and for those who were not here in the first session to have a pen and a paper and a notebook or for those who find themselves not having such, then inshallah ta'ala you can use the memo section of the, the cell phone and to grab the notes inshallah ta'ala. There's a lot of ground we want to cover so that we understand inshallah ta'ala and have appropriate anticipation and expectations. What we want to highlight is the main point of each principle and that which is al uh, yani that which is sought after for each principle. So we want to look at and highlight what is the main point from each principle inshallah ta'ala. And in addition to that we want to take some some benefit yani, uh, from the principle as much as we're able to inshallah ta'ala. But again I encourage everyone to go back when you have time and go over other explanations of this tremendous book with Milahi Ta'ala. So go over other explanations of this tremendous book. And like before, inshallah ta'ala, we want to highlight certain words, certain phrases, certain concepts, and focus in on them, inshallah ta'ala. And that is our uh, yani takeaway from this particular session. Naam. The first principle, as the Imam he mentions, and we had went over a line of it before, right? Uh, but just as to recap, al qaida al ula the first principle, and ta'lam anna al kuffar al ladina qatalahum Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam muqirruna bi anna Allah ta'ala huwa al khaliq al mudabbir wa anna dhalika lam yudkhilhum fi al Islam. والدليل قوله تعالى قل من يرزقكم من السماء والأرض أم من يملك السمع والأبصار ومن يخرج الحي من الميت ويخرج الميت من الحي ومن يدبر الأمر فسيقولون الله فقل أفلا تتقون Allah Ta'ala, he says, or before going, coming to the ayah, the shaykh, he says, and know that those disbelievers, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he fought against them, they used to agree that Allah, the Most High, He was the Creator, and He was the Sustainer. But even with that, that did not enter them into Islam. That did not make them Muslims. Naam. And the proof and evidence of this, the proof of evidence of the concept that was aforementioned, right? So the proof and evidence that these kuffar, they used to agree that Allah was the creator and that Allah was the sustainer and so on and so forth. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He was the arranger of the affairs. Is Allah Ta'ala's statement. It's the statement of Allah the Most High. As He says, what translated means, Say, O Muhammad, meaning say to who? Say to the kuffar, say to the polytheists, say to those uh, mushrikun. Who provides for you from the sky and from the earth? Who is the one who owns the hearing and the sight? And who brings out the living from the dead and the dead from the living. 
And who was the disposer of affairs? They. Who is the they here? The kuffar. The mushrikun. The polytheists. They will say, Allah. So say to them, will you not then have fear of Allah's punishment for setting up rivals with Allah in worship? Naam. Then will you not have fear of Allah Ta'ala's punishment for setting up rivals with Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala as relates to worship? Al-Maqsood min hadihi al-Qa'ida. That which is the takeaway, what I want everyone to get from this particular principle is two things. Two things, right? Keeping consistent with the two things, two things, right? Two things. And the first of them is as the Imam he mentioned, أن الكفار الذين قاتلهم رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم مكرون that those kuffar who the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he fought against them they used to agree they used to agree with what they agreed that Allah was the creator and they agreed that Allah was the sustainer um, excuse me the مدبر that Allah was the uh, arranger of the affairs this is what the Shaykh he mentioned but also we can add to that, they, they agreed that Allah was a raziq that Allah was the provider and the sustainer, Naam, so on and so forth, that Allah is the one who caused life and the one who caused death. They agreed with something. Remember in the last class we went over the categories of a tawheed, and they were how many? Three. Three. Right. And what are they? Tawheed al-Rububiyyah Tawheed al-Rububiyyah Al-Uluhiyyah Asma'u al-Sifah Right, they believe in the Oh, excuse me they, uh, Tawheed is of three types So from these three types of Tawheed Which Tawheed did the polytheists believe in? Tawheed al-Asma'u al-Sifah Tawheed al-Rububiyyah Tawheed al-Rububiyyah Ma'am? They believe in al-Rububiyyah Right just belief in rububiyyah, is that enough to enter a person into Islam? No. No. A tawheed of rububiyyah, is this the tawheed that the prophets and messengers came to teach their people? No. 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 Tawheed of rububiyyah. Yes. Yes. Some say yes, some say no. Yes. Yes, because all three of them is the fastest. One really, but they just divide them so we can understand how to push the world. Okay. Huh? Uluhiyah. Uluhiyah. Okay, so we got all of them and then Uluhiyah. Which one? Uluhiyah. 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 Which one? Uluhiyah because this was the, this was the, uh, the, the Mushu, they did, what they did, what they, 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 they believed in a lot of lordship, but yet mm-hmm. they, you know what I'm saying, the, they, they, when they went to give to their gods, you know what right. saying, that was the, sh- they made them an intercessor. Right, so so what's the Tawheed that the, the, the prophets and messengers, what was their focal point when they called their people? Was to which which one? Tawheed al Uluhiyyah. Now, Tawheed al Uluhiyyah. So belief in Tawheed al Rububiyyah by itself won't enter a person to Islam. Mm. And how do we, what's, what's one of the implicit ways that we understand this fact being? Right? Implicitly, we understand this because what? The prophets and the messengers came to teach their people at Tawheed Uluhiyyah. Because their people already believed in what? Rububiyyah. Right? So the fact that they believed in Rububiyyah already, but yet prophets and messengers were sent in the call into Uluhiyyah is a proof of evidence that just believing in Rububiyyah doesn't enter you into Islam. Why? Because if they were already Muslims, and then prophets and messengers came to them to call them to Islam, that would have been what? Redundant, correct? And Allah Ta'ala is greater than that. So, we understand from this point alone, implicitly what is implied by this is that what? That they were kuffar. And that's why messengers had to come to them. To, 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 to call them to La ilaha illallah. Also, we understand that what? That just a belief in a tawheed al rububiyyah does not enter a person into La ilaha illallah. Because if they had already entered into La ilaha illallah, then they wouldn't have to be called to La ilaha illallah. Right? So, so they came calling their people to Uluhiyyah. Why? Because they already believed the Rububiyyah. And if you and if you study the Quran and contemplate over it, you will see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses Rububiyyah as a proof and an evidence why they are to establish Uluhiyyah. 
Right? Like, for example, Allah Ta'ala, what's the first, what's the first command in the Quran? Who knows? Which verse? What surah? Let's start with the surah. What surah? Baqarah. That was easy, right? But which verse? <laughs> No. Yeah, you have. Yeah, you and Nas. 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 Yeah, so the fact that Allah, Allah Ta'ala reminds them, worship your Lord. Do you know the number of that ayah? Uh, which one? It's 20 what? 21, huh? Surah Baqarah. Ayah. No, no, ayah. The number. Hmm? 21? 22? 23? Which one? It's 21. It's 21. I'm just making it work for it. Which one? <laughs> huh? 21. Ascent. Ascent. 21. This is the first command in the Quran. Right? The first the first command in the Quran. If you examine this, Allah, Allah Ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhanna, si'budu rabbakum. O you who believe, worship your Lord. Your Lord points to what 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 category of Tawheed? Rububiyyah. And Allah Ta'ala says, uh, uh, who created you? Khulaqakum. The creation and being the creator is that's from what type of Tawheed? Creator? No, no, no. The fact that Allah Ta'ala creates and He's the creator. Oh, it's Because that's part of, right? That Allah is the creator, sustainer. But. Uh, and who created those who came before you? Also, what? Uh, Rububiyah, pointing to a Tawheed al Rububiyah. But what is this Tawheed al Rububiyah being used to establish? <laughs> worship your Lord. To establish worshiping Allah Ta'ala alone. And if you go to the next ayah, the next ayah also shows what? Also brings Rububiyah. Naam. And then at the end of that ayah is the first prohibition in the Quran. <laughs> The first prohibition. So the first, the first command is in what verse? Twenty-one. Which surah? Baqarah. Like the first prohibition is in surah Baqarah. What verse? Twenty-two. What's the prohibition? What part of the ayah? Naam. فَلَا تَجْعَلُوا لِلَّهِ أَنْدَادًا وَأَنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ So do not set up rivals with Allah and worship, and you know. So the first prohibition in the Qur'an prohibits what? Shirk. The first command, command to? Tawheed. And the first prohibition prohibits? Shirk. So now when the ulama say, Tawheed awwala, the Tawheed comes first. Does that sound so crazy now? Of course, it comes first in the Qur'an. When the Prophet ﷺ said, Mu'adh ibn Jabir to Yemen, he, called him to, yeah, he told him to teach the people to call him, Ayyu Allah to single out Allah alone. What is that? Tawheed. <laughs> Naam, it's Tawheed. So Tawheed comes what? Comes first. Tawheed comes first. Naam. Wait. Ala kulli hal. So we take away from this verse that the kuffar, they used to believe, and even now still, many of them believe in Tawheed al rububiyyah But it's not enough to enter them into Islam. It's not enough. Because in order to be entered into Islam, a person has to accept what? La ilaha illallah. And the focal point, or yani, what is... Yani, uh, what is stress on that, like you mentioned before, as relates to what Tawheed is what? Singling out Allah alone with worship. Because when a person worships Allah Ta'ala alone, then by default, they are going to believe properly in Rububiyya wal Asma wa Sifat. Right? But if a person believes in Rububiyya, this does not necessarily equate to them worshiping Allah alone. And that's because their belief is what? 
is corrupted, is not correct. It's compromised, right? So it is incumbent for us to know and to understand that just believing in Rubiya is not enough because Rubiya, if Radullah, Fidatihi wa Afali is singling out Allah alone, yani in his actions and in himself, is to believe that Allah exists, is to believe that Allah is the only creator, the only sustainer, the only uh, cause of life, cause of death, so on and so forth. That's Rubi. But if that does not translate into Uluhiyah, then it's not going to benefit a person. Now, this is important to understand. Because now, when the Unitarians or the Christians come up, Unitarians, quote unquote, right? Do they get any credit for being Unitarians? No, because they still what? Making shirk. So just because they don't believe Isa is Allah, nor Allah's son, Alhamdulillah, that's good. But they're still not good enough. Why? Because they're still making shirk. They're still making shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? They still don't believe in the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So without La ilaha illallah Muhammad rasulullah, there's nothing for them. There's nothing for them. Without La ilaha illallah Muhammad rasulullah, there's nothing for them. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has come. You have to believe in him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There's no option. Naam. So they get no credit. So they, nothing. Naam. Right. Also, Secondly, أن إقرارهم بالتوحيد الربوبية فقط لم يدخلهم في الإسلام is that one they believed in tawheed al rububiyyah. That's one thing we have to understand from this principle. The second is that their belief in a tawheed al rububiyyah is not enough to enter them into Islam. It's not enough to enter them into Islam. نعم. That makes sense. طيب. Then the author goes on to the second principle. And that second principle, أنهم, and it's important to understand, because with these principles, we start to understand the dynamic of shirk. Right? We start to understand the dynamic of shirk and the concept of shirk. And how, no matter how you slice it or dice it, is none of it is acceptable. None of it is acceptable. So when a person, if a person were to understand these principles good, then they will know the fruitless nature, and they will know the pure counterintuitiveness of interfaith dialogue. It's of no point. It's a waste of time, and it's a disservice to human beings. It's a disservice to humanity. Because all of these people, right, there's this interfaith, all this type of stuff, from the Jews and the Christians and, and so on and so forth, and this, them in particular, doesn't benefit them because they need to be Muslim. Because they're still falling into one of these four things. So they still need to be Muslim. So by us coming together and talking about what we agree about is fruitless. For what? For what? That's still not going to save them from the threat of going to the hellfire forever. That's still not going to give them glad tidings of eligibility to enter into Jannah. Because they're still making shirk. No, no, it, it definitely disagree with Aqidah. But this is why, yani, when the people, when Ahl Sunnah say things like, no, we don't, we're, not, we're not a part of interfaith, there's no benefit in that. And, and so a lot of times people don't understand where that comes from. Does that come from a person just being malicious, just being mean spirited, and so on and so forth? No, it comes from properly understanding Aqidah. That even if we speak about, oh, you believe in Ibrahim, we believe in Ibrahim. So what? If you don't follow him, it don't benefit you. Like how Allah Ta'ala told the, the Mushrikun what to be upon the way of Ibrahim, he was not a polytheist. He was upon Islam, upon Tawheed, he was not polytheist. Naam. So just because you believe in Ibrahim, okay, so what? Because in reality, you don't believe in him because you're not upon his way. The Christians come and they say, oh, we believe in Isa. No, in reality, you don't believe in Isa because Isa told you Muhammad was coming, Muhammad came, you just believe in Muhammad, you just believe in Isa. So in reality, you don't believe in Isa. So your claim and me acknowledging that you make a claim is not benefiting you when I know your claim is futile. It's rejected. If you really want to believe in Isa, then you have to follow Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and then you could truly believe in Isa, then you could be, yeah, I knew upon what Isa was upon. 
You understand what I'm saying? So it's not that we're being malicious, it's that we're being gentle, we're being yani beloved, we're being kind, because we understand it's a waste of time. We want you to benefit as human beings, so we gotta call you to what's gonna benefit you. We don't uh, we don't make you think that you're doing wrong, but it's right. That's that's wrong. You'll say a person is a wrong person. If a person was doing something wrong, it's gonna hurt them, kill them, right? And then you didn't say anything about it, people would censor you. They'll say, How are you letting him do that? You know it's gonna hurt him. How are you letting him eat that? You saw glass fell into it. How are you letting him eat that? You saw, I don't know, rats playing in it. You're not going to say nothing? You convince him, no, just put some ketchup on it, man. Some hot sauce. It'd be good. They're going to say you're a bad person, correct? But so how much more so? And that's just maybe, he may get, I don't know, food poison or something, right? Okay? But now, you're flattering a person into thinking what he's doing is okay and he's doing something that's going to land him in hell forever. Who's worse? The person that didn't say anything about the rats playing in the, in the, in the rice or the person that let the person do shirk and made him think it was okay? Uh, of course, the shirk. So this is this is why we don't waste our time with that because if we're going to in a, if we're going to dialogue with the kufar, then we're going to call them to Islam. There's not going to be no everybody's okay kumbaya stuff. No. No, we're going to call, call them to Islam. Alright? Now, so, the next principle is that these kuffar, and it's important to understand as well, because what Shaykh he mentions, he says, أَنَّهُمْ يَقُولُونَ That they used to say, مَا دَعُونَاهُمْ وَتَوَجَّهْنَا إِلَيْهِمْ إِلَّا لِطَلَبِ الْقُرْبَ وَالشَّفَاعَ That we did not call upon them, Right? Except, or nor turn to them, except to seek from them qurba, to become near, wa shafa'a, and for intercession. Right? So now, listen to this concept. So now you have the kuffar, and they said, we didn't, yeah, I used to worship these things. Like they'll try to come and say, no, we're not worshiping these things per se. But we're doing these acts of devotion so that we can draw near unto Allah by way of them and so that these individuals can intercede on our behalf. So that's okay, right? No. It's not okay. Right? But but Dalil, Wumad Dalil, what's the proof? What's the proof that they should try to draw use them to draw near? Qulu Ta'ala is Allah Ta'ala statement when Ladina Tahdu Miduni Lahi Awliya. مَا نَعْبُدُهُمْ إِلَّا لِيُقَرِّبُونَ إِلَى اللَّهِ زُلْفَىٰ And that those who used to worship other than Allah, they said we, we did not worship them except so that they may draw us near unto Allah. Allah Ta'ala, He goes on to say, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَحْكُمُ بَيْنَهُمْ فِي مَا هُمْ فِيهِ يَخْتَلِفُونَ And that verily Allah, He will judge between them about that in which they used to differ in. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَهْدِي مَنْ هُوَ كَاذِبٌ كَفَّارٌ this is, Listen to the point of the ayah. So that we know that this claim is rejected. Allah Ta'ala refutes them. They're saying, no, 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 we're not worshipping these things per se, but we're just trying to get you these things to get near. I'll give you an example. The, the, the Catholics. The Catholics. They pray to their saints. Patron saint of this, patron saint of that, patron saint of that. They, uh, uh, they pray to them. So now if you come and you say, you think that thing is a God? Why are you praying to that thing? No, 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 no. We're not praying to that thing. But that, but that, whoever, Saint so-and-so, Saint such and such, they're going to take our request to the Creator. That's okay, right? No. No. Right? Allah Ta'ala destroys this concept. Allah Ta'ala, He says about these individuals, what? Inna Allah la yahdi. Allah does not guide men who are kathib, the, the one who is a liar, Kafal, the one who makes a lot of kufr. <clears throat> so Allah Ta'ala says about these individuals that they are what kufar. It's not acceptable. Right? Now, when it comes to the likes of the Catholics, we say, oh, that makes complete sense. They, they're Catholics. Right? You even have others, yeah, you know, the nominations and so on and so forth, who do similar things. Right? They pray to Mary and so on and so forth. Right? They pray to some of their angels, Mikhail, and so on and so forth. Right? They say, is that, that's okay? No, it's not okay. We're not praying to them. We know that they're not the creator, but we just, yeah, they're going to take our request to the creator. No, it's not okay. This is kufr. It makes sense when we talk about the Christians. Right? Let me ask you a question. 
things that are the same, things that are alike, the ruling is the same, correct? Things that are alike, the ruling is the same. Same process, same, same what? Outcome. Outcome. Same verb, same result. Same process, same result. Correct? If I, if, if, if I hit your hand with a hammer, what happened? It won't swell up, it's going to hurt. Okay, I say, don't, don't worry about it. That was, that was your left hand. That was your left hand. Let me hit your right hand. Same thing. It's what's going to happen. It's going to hurt. It's going to swell up. Same same difference, correct? Nothing changes because just because we're going to change the hand. Okay, now check this out. So you understand why this is so important. Because a person may come for argument sake and say, why are you wasting your time talking to Muslims about these things when these are things that the polytheists used to fall into? Like, Muslims be Muslim. We ain't, we ain't got them problems, right? Mm. The Sufis who pray to the saints in the, in the grave. Is that different? No, same thing. It's the same, same concept, same thing, correct? Right? Same thing. So it's important that these things are stressed that the Muslims are taught. Because ignorance has grown to such an extent that they're doing these things and they think it is okay. They think it doesn't go against la ilaha illallah. This is why the shaykh is stressing this because even in his time, you had Sufis doing these things and they didn't believe that it went against la ilaha illallah. So he, yeah, he uh, part of the, the benefit from this is showing them that this is the way of the polytheists. Look at the way of the polytheists. Now reflect on what you're doing. It's the same thing. Same claim. Claim for claim. Same thing. We're not worshiping them. We're using them to get close to Allah and intercede for us. You're saying the same thing that they said. If they said it was wrong, how come you say it is right? No, it's still wrong. And this is why we have to yani, uh, stress these things. Because you have shayatleen from human beings. You have shayatleen from, from, from the likes of these, these Sufis and so on and so forth. And they strive to go out and to teach people their doubts. And they strive to refute the books of Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab. Right? So, and, 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 and strive to bring doubts to it. So as to say, no, 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 you can pray to Saint so and so, and it's and it's okay. It's not what they're saying. It's it's, it's all right because it's different. No, it's not different. It's the same thing. But it's important that we stress this. Why? Because the person that falls into this, this is, could potentially do what? Into shirk, but what? Take you out of Islam. These Muslims who fall into it, they're Muslim. Why? Because they're ignorant. Because they've been mistaught, because they've been lied to, because uh, evil scholars have come to them and say, this doesn't go against la ilaha illallah. So you're okay still. This doesn't go against la ilaha And they don't know. So are we going to leave our brothers and our sisters upon this danger? No, we have to teach them. But in order to teach them, we have to learn. You know, in fact, people say, like you're a team. The one who, who's deprived of something can't give it. Right? If I don't have it, I can't give it to you. You come and you say, all right, let me get some a million dollars. <laughs> I don't have a million dollars. I can't give a million dollars. Right? So it's incumbent that we learn this so that we can one, one, protect ourselves from from it, from falling into it. Two, so we can help and share with our families so that they don't fall into it and they are safe God from it. And so that we can share with our Muslim brothers and sisters these dangers. Now these dangers. The delete for shafa'a, the delete for intercession. قوله تعالى is allowed to add a statement وَيَعْبُدُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ مَا لَا يَضُرُّهُمْ وَلَا يَنْفَعُهُمْ وَيَقُولُونَ هَؤُلَاءِ شُفَعَاؤُنَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ is that they used to worship along with Allah those who didn't hurt them nor benefit them and they will say these things are our intercessors with Allah so they took these things and said we're only worshipping them to get near to Allah. But our intention, our overall intention is Allah. So that's okay, right? No, not at all. Because they're worshipping other than Allah. So, so the, so the uh, Imam Muhammad Abdul Wahhabi mentions, he says, well, shafa'a, shafa'atan. And shafa'a is of two types. Shafa'a, manfiya. You have the shafa'a that is prohibited. Right? The shafa'a that's no good. It's prohibited. Then you've got the shafa'a that is accepted, that is affirmed. That is accepted and that is affirmed. 
This here is important to understand because by way of this you're able to destroy the doubt of the polytheists. When they come in and say, no, it's just for shafa'ah, then you can break it down and say, okay, look, even for argument's sake, even for argument's sake, what you're doing is futile. Right? You're not going to get the, the, the shafa'ah that you're looking for. Why? Because you're making shirk. And shafa'ah is not earned by shirk, nor is it granted to the mushrikun. To the polytheists. The shafa'a is only for the people of Tawheed. So there's no way, which way, shape, and form that shafa'a can be attained by means of shirk. And this is the takeaway of, what we, of, 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 of this particular portion. By explaining, you got the shafa'a, the shafa'a is two types. The shafa'a, the intercession that is prohibited, and then the intercession that is accepted. Right? The shafa'a that is manfiya. The shafa'a that is that that is prohibited. What is this? This is the shafa'a makanat tuklabu min ghairillah. That which is sought from other than Allah. Fi ma la yaqdiru alayhi illallah. And that which only Allah has the ability to do. Naam. And this is an important point. So intercession in those things in which only Allah has the ability to do, you can only seek them from who? From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So them seeking intercession from their idols and from their saints and so on and so forth will not benefit them. So now you're able to explain to them in a detailed manner, breaking down the concept. That one, the concept is erroneous. But two, let's just say... It still don't work. Why? Because shafa'ah is not attained by way of shirk. It's only attained by way of tawheed. Shafa'ah is not granted to the polytheists. It's only granted to the believers, the monotheists. Naam, the muwahid, muwahidun. The shafa'ah that is... Oh, naam. And what's the delil? What's the delil of the shafa'ah that is rejected? Right? It's Allah Ta'ala's statement, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu anfiqu mimma razaqnaakum man qabri an yatiya yawmun la bay'un fi wa la khulla wa la shafa'a wal kafirun hum al-zalimun. Naam. Allah Ta'ala he says what translated means Yunus. Hmm? Yunus. Surah Baqarah. Surah Baqarah 254. Allah Azza wa Jal, He says, O you who believe, spin from, oh yeah, what translated means, O you who believe, spin from that which we had provided for you before a day comes when there will be no bargaining, nor friendship, nor intercession, and the disbelievers, it is the disbelievers who are the wrongdoers. Ma'am? So Allah Ta'ala negates intercession here. Wala shafa'a. No intercession. Now, does that mean Yom Qiyamah there's no intercession? No. 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 Allah explains in the end of the ayah. Allah Ta'ala he says, Wal kafirun. zalimun. And the disbelievers, they are the wrongdoers. So Allah Ta'ala makes it clear the context of what which is being speaking of, spoken about is that on the day of judgment, there's no shafa'a for who? For the disbelievers, for the kuffar. So, so when it says, Wala shafa'a, there's no shafa'a. For who? For the kuffar. Naam. For who? For the kuffar. Uh, Naam. And what's the proof that we know, we look at the whole context. And this is why, Yani, the ulama, they mentioned, you can't take just one verse or one hadith and think you understand the whole thing. You got to take all the ayat and all the hadith on a particular issue, then you can understand, but you have a rounded understanding. Because if a person reads this, he says, oh, okay, there's no intercession. So he may think no intercession, you're qiyamah. But then the next verse comes and shows you that it is intercession. The next, cause this, is, this is verse 254 of Surah Al-Baqarah. What's the next verse? Ayat al 255. In the ayat of Qurus, Allah Ta'ala says, And who is the one who can intercede with him except with his permission or after his permission? So this establishes, no, there is shafa'ah, but it has to be by what? The permission of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in addition to other things, right? And when it says there's no shafa'ah, meaning no shafa'ah for who? For the kuffar. No shafa'ah for the people who make? Shirk. Shirk. 
No shafa'ah for the people who make shirk. Shafa'ah is only for the people who are upon tawheed. So now we get to the second type of shafa'ah. So okay, we know that there's a shafa'ah that is prohibited, that's not going to happen, right? But then there's a shafa'ah that is muthbetah. There's, there's a shafa'ah that is uh, affirmed. And this shafa'ah is affirmed. And what's the shafa'ah that's affirmed? He had let he took level min Allah. That which is sought after from Allah. That's one. That's what we have for the dawn, right? Hmm? No, to, 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 that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the du'a, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Muqam al Mahmood, yani the, 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 the station of, 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 of intercession, meaning that, 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 that station, uh, that no one from creation will be honored with except for one, and, and that will, yani, which is, which we asked that, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam be that one, because he, and he's going to be, uh, that one, alayhi wa sallam. Now, like, the Shaykh he mentions, he says, وَالشَّافِعِ مُكْرَمٌ بِالشَّفَاعَةِ And the one who intercedes is, 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 is honored by being able to intercede. That's one. Or actually two, right? Because it has to be sought from Allah. The one who intercedes is, 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 is honored by it. وَالْمَشْفُورَ لَهُ and the one who is granted the, the, the intercession, Allah is pleased with his statements and with his actions. After they are granted permission. As Allah Ta'ala says, مَنَ الَّذِي يَشْفَعُ عِنْدَهُ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِهِ And who is he who can yani, uh, intercede with him except by his permission. So from this we understand three things we take away from. That for shafa'a, there are three conditions. Three conditions for shafa'a. The first condition for shafa'a is that what? Is that it has to be by the permission of Allah. What's the proof of that? What's the proof? Bakr 255. Bakr 255. Naam, which part? It's a big verse. Naam, Madal Ali Yashfar Inda, Illa, the Ithni. Naam. And who is he? Who, somebody else translated for me. What's the translation of that part? Who is he that can intercede with him except with his permission? Naam, I sent. Naam, and who is he that can intercede with him except with his permission? Because it's Allah SWT. Allahu Akbar. Right? Allahu Akbar. Who's going to intercede? In front of Allah, except with Allah's permission. It's Allah. Do these people really think that they only yeah, have it like that? <laughs> I mean, I don't know how else to put it. It's Allah. Who's going to intercede yeah, except with Allah's permission? So it has to be by permission. has to be. And that Allah Ta'ala has to be what? There's a second condition. وَرِضَاهُ عَنِ الشَّافِعِ That the one who makes the intercession, Allah is pleased with that person. Why? Because Allah Ta'ala is not going to grant shafa'ah except to one who he's pleased with. He's only going to grant shafa'ah to one who he is pleased with that individual. Naam? And Allah is only pleased with the people of Tawheed. So shafa'ah can only be gained by Tawheed. Naam? The third condition, وَرِضَاهُ and he is pleased with the one who receives the intercession. And he is pleased with the one who receives intercession. Right? Wait. From the proofs, from the proofs that show that even if Allah is pleased with the individual, The one who receives the intercession won't get it unless Allah is pleased with that person too. Or that individual too. Right? And this is after what? Allah's permission. So after Allah's permission. This can be found in Allah Ta'ala's statement. وَكَمْ مِنْ مَلَكٍ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ لَا تُغْنِي شَفَاعَتُهُمْ شَيْئًا And how many from the 
angels. Yeah. Angels. Right? And we know angels are, mashallah, the righteous slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now I'm Allah's pleased with them. But even with that, Allah Ta'ala says, La tughni shafa'atuhum shay'a. But their intercession won't benefit, period. Won't benefit nothing at all. Which shows the people that praying to an angel is not an option. It's still not going to help you. Naam. You're still not going to get intercession. Except, illa min ba'di an ya'than Allah. Except after Allah has permitted it. Permitted it for who? لِمَنْ يَشَاءْ وَيَرْضَى For those who he pleases and for those who he is pleased with. Naam. So if you're looking for shafa'ah, then you have to look for it from who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because it's all in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And looking for it from other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're not going to find it. You're not going to get it. And this ayah can be found in Surah Najm in his verse 26. Surah Najm in his verse 26. But here, when you reflect over these proofs and evidences, you see where Imam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab got what he was saying from. He didn't just pull it out the air. It wasn't just from himself. But it was from what? The proofs and the evidences. Which shows us what? That, the, that, that, that Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab, rahmatullah alayhi, he did not come with anything new. He didn't come with anything new. He didn't come with anything that was particular to him. But he just came calling to the same thing that the Prophet Sallallahu called to. Naam. And the, this is the reality. Those people who try to avert you and to make it seem like, no, it's just him. You know what I is? Do you know that saying? That saying, if you want to kill the message, do what? Kill the messenger. If you want to kill a message, kill a messenger. What does that mean? That means you do what? You discredit the messenger. Right? Okay. If anyone comes and try to discredit Muhammad from 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 the gate, that person no consideration from the gate. So when they try to come and discredit the Prophet, you're done. You know you you have to say. It's over before it started. So they realize, the Shayyah Queen realized, we can't discredit the Prophet. Because we're gonna lose that one. So now what do we do? We divert your attention by making you think that what Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab said was something different. So now, Wahhabi. Right? Now, okay, that's a Wahhabi. So now we, now we shift your attention. That's what common men do, isn't it? Isn't it not? Distract and, 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 and what's the other one? Uh, what do you call it? Divert. That's what common men do. He's showing you this hand while he's robbing you with that hand. You see how these charlatans, these shell things, you see how they are? You see how they are? Same tricks. Divert you from this and get you with that. So they divert it. Make it seem like it's Muhammad Abdul Wahab. Why? Because they want to attack what, what the Prophet came with. These are ayat from the Quran. These are ayat from the Quran. Who's arguing? And when you look now, right, if you look at some of the wisdom of, of, of the Shaykh Muhammad Abdul Wahab, is that what? Is that he's hitting them with what? The Quran. He's hitting them with the Quran. This is the ayat. Who gonna argue with the A now? You see? But it's important that we understand these things so that we can dismantle the, the doubts when they come. So when the doubts come, we dismantle them. And yani, this is why the scholars are able to refute the lies of the, of the people with, and with a smile on their face. It's easy. It's easy. Naam? But, so, the takeaway from this ayah. What we want to look at, the takeaway, is that al maqsud having yani, uh, from, from this principle, is, the, is, is, is that that which caused the polytheist to uh, yani, call upon other than Allah was two things. And that was one, they were seeking from those things to draw near to Allah. And they were seeking from those things intercession from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam. But none of that will benefit them. Another point that we have to know as relates to shirk is that what? Is that shirk is shirk is shirk is shirk. It's all shirk. Now you can say, oh, that's shirk better than that shirk. Right? Doesn't make, that don't make sense. That shirk better than that shirk. 
Doesn't make sense, right? Great. Right. What's the proof of this? Or in this, in, 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 uh, of this concept that it doesn't matter, it's, it's still shirk. It's the third principle the Shaykh points out. And the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam zahra ala unasan mutafarriqina fi ibadatihim. That he came upon people who they used to worship various things. Minhum man ya'budul malaika. From them was those who worship the angels. Wuminhum man ya'budul anbiya wa salihin. And from them were those who worship the prophets and the righteous ones. Wuminhum man ya'budul ashjar. والأحجار. And from them were those who used to worship trees and rocks. ومنهم من يعبد الشمس والقمر. And from them were those who worship the sun and the moon. وقاتلهم رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ولم يفرق بينهم. And the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he fought them all and he did not differentiate between them. He made no differentiation between them. نعم. And this here is the the, yani, the main takeaway from this particular principle. Is that ibadat ghayrillah, that the worship of other than Allah, duna nadharin illa man zilatil ma'bud, is that we don't look at the status of what is being worshipped. Now we don't look at the status of what is being worshipped. فَمَنْ يَعْبُدُ النَّبِي وَالْوَلِي وَالْمَلَكِ هُوَ كَمَنْ يَعْبُدُ الشَّجَرَ وَالْحَجَرَ وَالْ وال... يعني to the end is that whoever worships a prophet or a righteous person or an angel he is the exact same in our eyes as the one who worships a tree or a rock or other than that same thing same thing no differentiation because shirk is shirk is shirk is shirk Huh? And then the, the Imam he brings <coughs> proofs and evidences because a per- and this is what I love about it is that what a person may hear this and say well, yeah, this is well known but he still brings proofs and evidences so as to reinforce and show the Muslims that our deen is based upon proofs and evidences you can't speak about Islam except that you got to bring Qal Allah Qal Rasulullah Qal Sahaba that's it you can't just be coming from yourself and you know beautiful articulation think that's enough to get it over because it's pretty no you have to you had to bring some text Allah said and then that's the proper meaning of what Allah said and the proper uses of that particular ayah the prophet said that's the proper meaning of what the prophet said and that's the particular and that's the right use of that particular hadith this is the way the sahaba this is what they were upon now has to be like that so he brings proofs he says what the lead and 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 as relates uh, uh, oh no, before that, just a general principle. Now, nah, and, and the proof of this that the Prophet I tell him he was called to fight against every polytheist, regardless of what they worship, is Allah Ta'ala's statement, and fight against them until there is no fitna. Fight against all of them until there's no fitna. Fitna here means shirk. Fitna in this ayah, it means shirk. Bam. Until the religion, all of it is for Allah. The person will come and say, well, how you know fitna means shirk right there? Look at the context of the ayah. Naam. وَيَكُونَ الدِّينَ كُلُّهُ لِلَّهِ And so all of the deen is for Allah. So you're fighting against what? That which renders some of the deen to other than Allah, which is what? Shirk. So we so fitna. Hatala takuna fitna. So there's no fitna. Naam. And the proof that they used to worship the sun and the moon. What the Lil Shams will come up, Kodu Ta'ala's law ta'ala statement. Women ayat in lain with nahar was shams will come up. And from his ayat, from his signs, is the night, the day, the sun and the moon. لا تسجدوا للشمس ولا للقمر واسجدوا لله الذي خلقهن إن كنتم إياه تعبدون. Do not worship the sun and the moon. Do not prostrate to the sun and the moon, but prostrate to Allah who created them both. If you are in fact unto Him worshippers. Now the fact that Allah Taala He says لا تسجدوا للشمس والقمر. Don't prostrate to the sun and the moon is an indication that what. People's prostrated to the sun and the moon. They worship in the sun and the moon. Naam. But what the little malaika and the proof of the angels, Qawluhu Ta'ala, is Allah Ta'ala's statement, 
ولا يأمركم أن تتخذوا الملائكة والنبيين أربابا and you are not commanded to take the angels and the prophets as lords, as rivals with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so here is a dalil that what people used to take the angels and the prophets as rivals with Allah, they used to worship them and we were not commanded to do that so there is a proof and evidence for what that people used to worship the angels and the prophets Naam. But, that, but that particular ayah Shaykh, he wanted to, yani, the takeaway from that was the angels. Right? From the things was pointed to the fact that these things are so well known in Islam that so many proofs and evidences was pointed to each of these concepts. So the Shaykh, he don't bring the same ayah for the proof that they used to worship the, 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 the prophets, although that, that is a, a proof that they used to worship the prophets, but he brings another to show that this is well known. Right? So... He says, with the lead and biya, qawluhu ta'ala, and the proof that they used to worship the, the prophets is Allah Ta'ala's statement. But if qala Allah, ya Isa ibn Maryam, a'anta qudta linnas, attakhiduni wa ummi ila hayni min duni la, Allah Ta'ala, he's going to say to Isa, and when Allah said to Isa, O oh Isa, the son of Maryam, did you tell the people to take me and my mother, meaning yani, Isa, did you tell the people, did, did, Isa say to, yani, did Isa did you say to the people, take me and my mother as two gods other than Allah? Worship Isa and worship Maryam? Now, call Isa, Allah Ta'ala informs us that Isa, he said, will say, call a subhanak, ma yakunu li, an aqula ma laysa li bihaq. He said, all oh, praise belong to you. How glorified are you and far removed from imperfections. It is not for me to say what I don't have the right to say. I can't say that. I don't have the right to say that. Ma'am? And then listen, listen to this response which shows, yani this is subhanAllah, such a major proof of evidence will show that Isa is not Allah. Period. Not, and it's not Allah's son at all. He says, in kuntu kuntu فَقَدْ عَلِمْتَهُ If I said it, you would have already known. تَعْلَمُ مَا فِي نَفْسِي وَلَا أَعْلَمُ مَا فِي نَفْسِكِ You know what's in my soul? You know what's in me? I don't know what's in you. This is Isa saying what? I don't have no knowledge about Allah. Allah knows everything about me. I don't, I don't know about Allah. Except what? Except what Allah tells me. Except what Allah informs me. Which shows what? That Isa, alayhi salatu was salam, was a slave. He was an abd. He was a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Impoverished. No power, no might, no nothing. He only knows what Allah informs him of and allow him to know. That's it. Allahu Akbar. Naam. Like. إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ عَلَّامُ الْغُيُوبِ Because verily you are the knower of the unseen. Now this is Isa alayhi salatu salam. So when you're addressing people who are people of polytheism who have taken their uh, uh, awliya, their righteous people, then we say unto them, if this is the statement of Isa showing his uh, uh, poverty unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how he is impoverished, he is in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how in the world do you claim for your awliya other than that and they are not better than Isa? This is Isa ibn Maryam. This is Isa, the son of Maryam, the one who was born and had a mar- m- miraculous birth. Shaykh. This is Isa, the one who was from the best prophets and the messengers, from the best prophets and the messengers ever, from the best human beings ever. If this is his station of being impoverished until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how is this person dead in the grave right here? Gonna be able to do what he can't do. Doesn't make sense. Naam? Doesn't make sense. But this is the proof that they used to worship what the prophets and the messengers, as is well known. What the is salihin and the proof of the uh, righteous ones, Qawluhu Ta'ala, Allah Ta'ala's statement, Ula'ika ladina yad'una, these are the ones. Yani that you uh, that they call upon, huh? Yabtavuna ila Rabbihim al-wasila, 
ayyuhum aqrab wa yarjuna rahmatahu wa yakhafuna adhaba that these ones that you're calling upon and again this here is another tremendous verse because it's showing the deficiency the poverty the lack of ability and so on and so forth of these things that these people are calling upon and that these ones that they those whom they are calling upon for example like Isa like Uzair like the angel so on and so forth these things that you're calling upon for help these things that you're worshiping they themselves they themselves desire for themselves a means to up to their lord you calling upon them thinking they can help you and they will they worried about themselves they ain't worried about you cuz you're not upon what you're upon they fought against that called against that they called it something other than that they're worrying about a lot themselves they're worrying about benefiting themselves as to which of them will be nearest and they hope for Allah's mercy and they fear his punishment so these righteous ones that they're calling upon they themselves are scared they themselves want Allah's mercy they themselves are scared of Allah Ta'ala's punishment ala kulli hal this is a proof that what they're calling upon that righteous people are being called upon none of that is none of that is okay none of that is okay naam wa dalil al ashjar and i want you to understand this really i you know I, let me put it another way when i say shirk is shirk is shirk shirk is shirk is shirk so the person who worships an angel for us is no different than a person who worships a cow same thing if a person come and say i'm going to worship a rat or a pig same things the same because it's all shirk we don't change our outlook by looking at who is being taken as an object of worship who is being taken as a false deity no because the crime is that something is has been taken as a false deity so we don't care what was used as a crime against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the issue is there's a crime <coughs> huh shirk is the greatest oppression is the greatest crime and that's and that's the point not what you have used to make shirk it's the greatest crime now listen a less example a less example what will be your main concern the fact that you got hit over the head with a 2 by 4 or you got hit over your head with a bat what what's the point don't make a dip the point is you hit me in the head right if somebody came and hit you in the head what are you going to say or at least it was a 2 by 4 <laughs> right no you go you know you're sitting there your head bleeding broke whatever concussion you're going to say at least a 2 by 4 it's okay no you just hit me in the head that's the point okay was a, a bat no okay was a hammer a, you hit me in the head so the, so what you hit me with it doesn't matter because the issue is you hit me in the head you know said so this is this is the point where it doesn't matter what they worship because it's other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then it's all bad it's all the same it's all the same with the little ashjar wal ahjar and the proof of the statues uh, of of uh, rock, of uh, trees and of rocks and uh, any rocks qulu ta'ala is allah ta'ala statement and this is yani allah listen now we talking about rocks boulders stones right and trees check the proof أَفَرَأَيْتُمُ اللَّاتَ وَالْعُزَّةَ وَمَنَاتَ الثَّالِثَةَ الْعُخْرَى Have you not seen Lat and Uzza? Have you not seen Lat and Uzza? وَالْمَنَات The other of the pagan idols, يعني, the other third. Have you not seen them? Now a person may step back and say, How is that a proof for trees and stones? I don't understand. So now you have to understand what? Who is Allat? who is Uzza who is Manat right but Allat huwa sunam fi at-ta'if 
اللات نعم اللات he was the idol of the people of Ta'if he was the idol of the people of Ta'if نعم اللات يعني and this is with تخفيف اي اللات اللاتة اللات نعم this idol of the people of Ta'if it was a sakhra it was a stone it was a boulder so this this alat with takhrif ta yani this yani no shadda on ta this points to a stone points to a stone there was also another thing that they should take for worship and it was alat ta alat ta bil bil tajdid bil tajdid this one was a man it was a man right and he was called that because he used to make this he used to make this this this, this food now he used to call he used to make this food and he got his name because it stemmed from the verb let ta yalut to let ta yalut to so they called him alat ta بتجديد اللاتا لاتا نعم طيب this was a man he used to make some food but the point of takeaway here is that is talking about اللات with no shadda because this is what this pointed to a boulder this was a stone and remember we're talking about the proof about people who worship stones and trees نعم that makes sense طيب العزة عزة was a was shajarat naam they were trees uzza they were trees naam wal manat and manat hiya sakhra and manat is a stone is a, is a stone so here we have the proof for stones we got two proofs for stones one proof for trees which one was the tree uzza uzza Naam. So, and Allah, 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 why? But, yeah, and he can end the shaykh. It's as if the shaykh felt, let me balance it out. I brought two for stones, one for a tree. Let me bring another for a tree. Right? Well, I can end the shaykh. Perhaps. Because after mentioning that, the shaykh, he mentioned the hadith of Abi Waqid, Al Laythi, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Paul, and I'm gonna let you tell me, Yani, what this one is. He says, "خرجنا مع النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم." He said, "We went out with the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم إلى حنين to Hunain. ونحن حدثاء عهد بكفر, and we were newly left kufr, meaning we were new Muslims. We were new to Islam, new to the Deen, which points to what that they didn't, Yani, they didn't. There were some things they still needed to learn, right? He says, "Well, in Mushrikin and the and the polytheists, they had what Sidra." They had a uh, tree that they used to spend a lot of time with. Naam. Wa yanutuna biha aslihatahum. And they used to hang their weaponry, their swords and stuff from it. Huh? They used to hang their weapons from it. Yuqalu laha thatu anwaq. And it was called thatu anwaq. That's what the name of the tree was. They called it thatu anwaq. Because it was that which stuff would get hung on it. That's what that name generally yeah, it means for a rough translation. The thing that stuff get hung on it. Right? He says, For Mararna, we said the right So we passed another tree. The Qunna Ya Rasulullah, Ij'al lana that's an anwaqin, kama lahum that's an anwaq. So we said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, make for us a, make for us a that's an anwaq. But they got a that's an anwaq. They got a tree they hang stuff on. Make for us a tree we hang stuff on. Right? Why they used to hang their stuff on this tree and spend a lot of time with it? Because they thought the tree would give them blessings. Did it give them barakah? You know what I'm saying? So they would hang their weapons from it, thinking it's going to make their weapons more efficient. Hang my thing, hang my weapon from there, it's going to make it more efficient in battle now, because the tree going to put barakah in it. If I hang around it, the tree going to give me barakah. They sort of say, used to what? Worship, worship the tree. They used to worship the tree. It was shirk. You know what I'm saying? So the Shaykh, and he brings, he brings this uh, hadith. 
to show that they were that, that these mushrikun used to worship this tree. That these mushrikun they used to worship this tree. Now the takeaway again, just to reiterate from this particular one, is that no matter what is worshipped, it's all haram. It's all shirk. Does not matter. Another takeaway from this particular hadith that I want to I want to I want to highlight as uh, Sheikh Muhammad Sa'id Raslan, Allah Taala, he mentions, is a takeaway from this. Is that what? He said that in this, it points out the travesty of a taqlid wa tashabbuh bil kuffar. It points out the tragedy of blind following and imitating the kuffar. Because the request came because they got one, let us get one. Right? It's a tragedy. It's a tragedy. And, and we have to believe it. The Prophet I said, he told us, whoever imitates the people is from them. Now, but a person may come in and say, but the, why the Muslims, the Muslims need to hear about this? No, the Muslims need to hear about this, especially this time of the year, but all time of the year, but especially this time of the year. You had an individual, Brelvi, Mubtadeh, Baal, Mubil, individual in New Jersey. This man, in his foolishness, and when you hear it, you're going to be like, come on, that's just, that's dumb. <laughs> right? This man said, we got more right to Asa. We got more right to Jesus. So therefore, on Christmas, we should outdo the kuffar in giving gifts. <laughs> what? Right? But he really thought he was saying something. He thought that that made a lot of sense. But a person with a little bit of intelligence, he said, that's how stupid you mean. Because we got the right to Asa give more gifts. <laughs> right? And he was encouraging. Give, 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 you know, you know, you know, give, give, give the kuffar and you, you, you work with, give him gifts. Outdo him, outdo the other kuffar. Show them that, yeah, we, we, we have more right to Asa. Uh, right? But I want you to think about it. See, now that, that sounds absurd. Because it's absurd. But what about the Muslims that come and they say, oh, we supposed to respect our mother, so, hey, no problem. We're going to do Mother's Day too. Same thing, isn't it? Well, we respect our fathers, and we want to do Father's Day too, right? Oh, same thing, isn't it? Okay, what about those Muslims that say, you know what? We're supposed to give thanks to Allah SWT. I don't see nothing wrong with giving, you know, Thanksgiving. Sitting down and getting the turkey and some stuffing and all that. It's okay, right? No, it's the same thing. I mean, subhanAllah. You see? So, this imitation of the kuffar is dangerous. It's da- people don't understand. It's dangerous because it's dangerous from a, from a number of ways. One way that is dangerous is that what? It's, 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 yeah, I mean, you, you, you're, you're imitating them in that which is kuffar. You're imitating them with that which is of no benefit. You're imitating them in a way that is contrary to the way of the Prophet. That's first, yeah, I mean, that's, I don't know, I, don't know, I lost the numbers. That's one, two, three, whatever, yeah. I mean, yeah. But also, when you imitate the kuffar, you are exhibiting to them your understanding that your way is superior. So we have to imitate you. We're under you. You did something better, so we imitate you. Why? Because the one who is subjugated generally imitates who? The one who he deems as being superior. The oppressed, they imitate who? The oppressor. Now, this is how it works. This is how it works. Think back to colonialism. The kuffar came and oppressed people. Then the kuffar leave. The people who they oppress take over the government and act what? The same way they used to act. Call themselves the same name, run the government the same way, do this, have the same laws and so on and so forth. They act like the oppressor. Why? Because they felt the oppressor was better. You took us over and you left. So, okay, you must was better than us. So, we're going to do what you did. So, but, but, but we're Muslim. So, so do, uh, uh, do we think that their way is better than our way? If anybody should be imitating who, who should it be? They should be imitating us. They should be imitating us, not the, not the opposite. But these are from the dangers that come from imitating the kuffar. These are from the dangers of imitating the kuffar. Ala kulli hal, shirk is shirk is shirk is shirk. If a person worships uh, a prophet, is he better than a person that worships the cow? No. So let's put that in another term. So in the sense, when it comes to ibadah, 
We're not talking about the special uh, things that Allah Ta'ala has given to you know, the Jews and the Christians that we can eat their meat and marry their women. We ain't talking about that. Right? In terms of worship, is the Christian better than the Hindu? No. no. They make it shirk. This one prays to Isa, that one prays to this thing with a whole bunch of arms. Same thing. Right? I mean, I'm just saying, I don't know, I don't know the name of these things, but I got a whole bunch of arms, one got an elephant head, and one, I don't know, whatever. One's a monkey, I mean, I'm a sad. They had a bunch of stuff, right? But the one that prays to a rat is he is he is he is he better or uh, is he worse than the one that prays to the, an angel? No, they're both the same. Cause why? Shirk, shirk, shirk. So we don't look at what is being worshipped. The fact is that other than Allah is being worshipped, Allah says. So the Prophet said, he fought against them all. The Prophet said, just didn't fight against those who worship stones. And he left alone the Jews and the Christians. He fought the Jews and the Christians too. Ahl Kitab. He fought them too. That's the reality. Because they're all making shirk. The last principle وَأَنَّ مُشْرِكَيْنْ زَمَانِنَا أَغْلَبُ شِرْكًا مِنَ الْأَوَّلِينَ is that the polytheists of our time they are more they commit greater shirk than the people of old right? the people of old and here I need the people in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam this is what is being referred to. People in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu the people of antiquity. Because those who, the, the mushrikun of old, yushrikun of al-rakha, they used to make shirk in good times. وَيُخْلِصُونَ well, فِي shidda. But when times got rough, they used to call upon Allah alone. وَالْمُشْرِكُونَ وَمُشْرِكُوا زَمَانِنَا شِرْكُهُمْ دَائِمًا but the polytheists of our time, the shirk is all the time. They always make shirk. In good times and in difficult times. They always make it shirk. Now, now reflect. Muhammad Abdul Habi said this in his time. That the polytheists of his time were, were worse than the polytheists of old. Now, we see this in our time. We see this in our time. People, people in, in a state of panic and so on and so forth, and they're calling upon Jesus. Right? They're in a state of panic, and they're calling upon the likes of Abdul Qadir Jilani, they're calling upon Bedawi, they're calling upon Qulab. Subhanallah. Right? These people are of tremendous evil and wrong. The takeaway from here is that the bayan, uh, yani, ghir al shirk, ahl al zaman al musannif, is that the level of shirk, the extreme level of shirk in, in the time of the author, فمن بعدهم من المتأخرين وأنهم أغلب شركا من الأولين, and that those who came later from the people of yeah, those who came later were made more shirk than those who came before. And what's the proof that the people in the past that they used to call upon Allah alone when they were in trouble? Allah Ta'ala, He says, فَإِذَا رَكِبُوا فِي الْفُلْكِ And when they ride inside of the boats, when they embark upon the ocean, they're in the seas and the ocean, right? And in the ship, inside the ocean. دَعُوا اللَّهِ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ They call upon Allah alone. They mean when they're in the ocean, and that, and that, uh, the waves come and, and the storm hits, right? And, it's, and, and the waters get choppy. They call upon Allah alone. They call upon Allah alone. Allah Ta'ala goes on to say, جاهم, But when we save them and to, the, to, the, to the land, then they're making shirk. So now they're in good time, they're making shirk. But they were in times of peril, they call upon Allah alone. Now, if one would think back, subhanAllah, to show how how dangerous this thing has become, if one would think back, I need to even maybe some of the older Christians, Wallahu a'lam wa a'lam, like our grandparents, great grandparents, so on and so forth, now, when startled, their knee jerk re- their, their knee jerk re- reaction was what? Was to call upon God. Oh God, no. Right? 
So now think about how twisted you have to be, for example, for those Sufis, so on and so forth, who, when they get startled, they call upon their saint. Think of how twisted you gotta be. That your involuntary action is to call upon a saint. That's horrible, isn't it? But this is the reality of the people of Shirk. And you find the people of Shirk in the time of the of the, of the author, they were greater in their shirk than the people of of, 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 of of old. And likewise, now in our time, same thing. There are many Christians now to this day. If you start of them, they call upon Jesus. They call upon Jesus, begging Jesus to stop this thing. Don't let this happen. Save me from this. And Jesus is impoverished. He can't save you. He don't know what you're saying. He can't hear you. Huh? And when it's made known to him what he used to do, he's going to free himself from that. He ain't got nothing to do with that. Right? These are just some realities as it relates to uh, the shirk. These things are important. A person that say, well, why do you, why do you spend all this time? And why did the early man spend all this time writing these books about shirk and so on and so forth? It's very simple. It's very simple. The person who understands these principles, good, these four principles, they'll be able to distinguish between the, 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 the situation of the monotheist and the situation of the polytheist. They'll be able to distinguish what is true Tawheed and the people of Tawheed and what is Shirk and the people of Shirk. They'll be able to know the difference. Now, the best way to understand a thing is by knowing its opposite. So, in order to enhance your knowledge of a Tawheed, you have to know what is Shirk. You have to know what is Shirk. One of the reasons and benefits in knowing what Shirk is, is so you know what to stay away from. That makes sense? You know what to stay away from. I give you an example. And without knowing to stay away from, then you won't, you won't know what to avoid. If you were sent to the store, right? Now I was trying to think of another, yeah, I need similar to, but I can't, so we're going to remix another one, an old one. I'm going to remix it. <laughs> if you were sent to the store and you were told to buy oranges, do not buy tangerines. Get oranges, do not get tangerines. If you don't know what a tangerine is, and they're next to one another, what's going to happen? You're going to grab oranges and tangerines. You're going to get them both. Because you're going to go there and say, they both orange. This one look a little, little one. Maybe this is a baby orange. I don't know. Throw it in there too. Right? That's what you're going to say. Throw it in there. I don't know. So if you don't know, you're going to fall into it. So in order to avoid shirk, you got to know what it is. In order to avoid the concepts of polytheism, you have to understand what are the concepts of polytheism. In order to understand what the polytheists are upon, you have to understand what motivated them to do these things. Because now that you know what motivated them to do them, then you know that, okay, then that motivation is wrong and it leads to wrong. So we're not going to follow them in that. And also it helps you to better call them to what is correct by showing them this concept is not correct. And what you're doing is not correct. And if you truly want to, yeah, I mean, for Allah, to be pleased with you, then you have to be upon Tawheed. Now, then you have to be upon Tawheed. If you truly want to go to the Jannah, you have to be to, upon Tawheed. If you truly want to draw near to Allah, you have to be upon Tawheed. If you truly want intercession, you have to be upon Tawheed. So on and so forth. This is why these principles are very important. Very important. Now, so again, I urge everyone to Go back over these points, these principles. Go over this book. Read it. Understand it. Memorize it. For those who have the ability to, in the time, memorize it. ta'ala, Understand it. And go over other explanations of it to enhance your understanding of it and your knowledge of what is contained therein because it is very, very, very important, especially if we want to get to yeah, any, uh, 
We want to reach that desirable thing that we want to reach is important. And don't underestimate and don't undervalue the usul, the fundamental principles. Because there's a saying that says, Man muni'a min al wasul, muni'a min al husul, or wasul. Muni'a min al wasul. That whoever is prevented from the fundamental principles, then they will be prevented from reaching what they're looking for, what they're desiring. So study the principles of the religion of Islam. Go through them. Those who have the, the workbook, and we have an extra one here if anybody needs. Go over the book. Go through the the uh, uh, Shosmo. Do the yeah, I mean, the lessons. Fill out the questions. Write in it. Study it. Go over it with your families. Inshallah, Taala. Atafakumullah. Jazakumullahu khaira. Wa asallah. أن يجعلني وإياكم من من إذا أعطي شكر وضبطوا لي الصبر وإذا أذنب استغفر فإن هؤلاء ثلاث عنوان السعادة ما أسأل الله تعالى to make me and you of those who when they are given they are thankful when they are tested they are patient and when they make sins they ask for forgiveness وَأَنْ يُوَفِقْنِي وَإِيَّاكُمْ لِمَا يُحِبُّهُ وَيَرْضَى And that He gives me and you the success in doing that which He loves and that which He's pleased with. وَيَجْعَلْنَا مِنَ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَمِعُونَ قَوْنَا فَيَتَبِعُونَ أَحْسَنَا That He makes us of those who hear a statement and they follow the best of it. This is what I had to present. فَنَتَّفِي بِهَذَا الْقَدْرِ وَصَلَى اللَّهُ وَسَلَّمْ عَلَى نَبِيْنَا مُحَمَّدٍ وَعَلَى آلِهِ وَصَحْبِهِ أَجْمَعِينَ وَجَزَّاكُمُ اللَّهُ خَيْرًا